So let's learn more about these GDT and LDT tables that we learned about, that we saw references to in the previous section. So the segment selector is what we saw, and we saw there was a table indicator bit in there, where if it was zero, it was pointing at the GDT, and if it was one, it was pointing at the LDT. So we're gonna dig more into that. So while this table indicator says which of these tables it's pointing at, how we find the actual tables themselves are with these special purpose registers. There's a GDT register which points at a memory location that says here's the memory for the GDT, and there's an LDT register that points at a memory location that says here's the LDT. Furthermore, this LDT register, even though it was shown as if it had all these fields, in practice it sort of behaves like a segment register in that there's only a 16-bit area that's actually visible to us and that can be set. And then there is a hidden portion that acts as a cache of information coming from the other table. And then the entries in these tables are called segment descriptors, but we're not going to learn about them until the next section. They're basically data structures describing the segments that are in these tables. So let's look at that first register, the global descriptor table register. So this register is 10 bytes long. It has two bytes for the table limit that says the size and eight bytes for a 64-bit linear base address. So that is a linear address, and we said for now we're pretending paging doesn't exist, so that effectively is a physical address as far as we're concerned. So 64-bit address of the start of the table and a two-byte address uh, size of the end of the table. Now this table limit field is actually a size in bytes, and it is a size that specifies the last valid or included byte in the table. So if the overall table was hex 1000 big, this wouldn't say hex 1000, it would say hex FFF to basically say the last byte is this base address plus FFF. That's the last byte that you can index into. Now, setting this register is done via a special instruction, LGDT, load the GDT register. And you can see this is a privileged instruction which can only be done by the kernel. And reading or storing out the contents of that register can be done via the SGDT, store GDT to memory instruction. And that actually is not a privileged instruction. Now, there's really no good reason why someone other than the kernel would need to actually read out the contents of this register, but there's an interesting dichotomy that we'll uh, see exploited for interesting purposes later on, given the fact that this, you know, one of these instructions for writing is privileged, but one of these instructions for reading is not. 